If I were to tell you that politicians and everyone who serves in any capacity in any level of civil government is automatically also a minister of God, what would you say? Well, today on Stand in the Gap, we're going to deal with this paradigm shifting truth. When understood, this powerful design changes the entire way a person thinks about government, about politics, and about the politicians we choose for public office. I trust that you'll stay tuned. I'm Sam Rohr, and I'll be joined by Pastor Isaac Crockett. Our theme for today is Politicians as Ministers of God, God's Remarkable Design. And I trust that you're intrigued by the theme we've chosen for today's program, because while the statement is true, it runs violently counter to the view of modern America and a culture that increasingly despises those in office, yet at the same time will run and fall before those who are in office as if they are powerful gods capable of solving all our problems. Now, as we normally do on this program, we choose transcending cultural issues of greatest importance to our nation for which there seems to be no identifiable solution, but for which we know God's Word, the Bible, holds all of the answers. And such is the case today. We'll approach this issue from the perspective of a biblical worldview, a Judeo-Christian worldview consisting of four essential pillars, and we will look to the Scripture for what God says and why He says it. Now, the insight will help us to answer such questions as these. Why does God say that those in office are His ministers? Why does God say that those in office will be held accountable to Him for what they do? We'll answer the question of why understanding the truth of those in office as God's ministers helps to understand why there is a biblical uh, partnership between those in the pulpit and those in office, and not just a political relationship, and why pastors and Christians should have more than a, or should have more than a hands-on relationship with those in office. Now, to help further underscore Isaac and my discussion on this issue will be a special guest, Perry Gauthier, North American Director for Capital Ministries. Now, according to a 2017 Pew Research poll, the trust factor in government is nearing an all-time low, about 20 percent. The slide from 1960, where the trust factor was about 80 percent, to now below 20 percent is literally astounding. And I've seen polls about trust in those in Congress as low as 9 percent. So this is a most serious issue that, if not corrected, will result in a loss of freedom and the ability to maintain our nation since it depends on trust and unity. And with that introduction, I want to turn to Isaac here right now. Isaac can say, we've undertaken a big topic here. Uh, but I want to ask you your concept. Your father was a pastor. I know that he had a particular love and relationship with those who were in office. I just want to ask you, you grew up in his home. You're a pastor now. Uh, you share a lot of these same thoughts. What what was it that drove your pastor, or your, your father rather, as a pastor, uh, in his desire to communicate with those in office? You know, he, he had a, a passion for the Word of God and a passion for people to share the Word of God with. And so for him, it was just natural. Uh, he saw historically, biblically, um, in our own country, though, that uh, our government leaders are extremely important. We're told to pray for them influence them, and so he took opportunities he had to try to influence them, and it was neat to see uh, from the left to the right, uh, progressive to very conservative, that they saw his passion for them, that he wanted to help them. He wasn't there to get pictures or signatures or to get them to do a favor for him, and so they became very close. He became, at his funeral, there were people, some of the most liberal <laughs> of politicians and some of the most conservative came, and his influence was, was for everything from local levels to, uh, of course, even the vice president of the United States. Um, uh, some correspondence recently, we, someone was looking through of him and Dan Quayle and different things, but then our current vice president, uh, Mike Pence, was a close, close friend of my dad's, and uh, it just, he was someone they could confide in without having to worry about, you know, um, what he might do with that or things. So he just had a passion for their souls and for mentoring them and helping them, and it's neat to see the Lord do that. And you are kind of the other side of this. You've been uh, in office for a couple of decades, 
And I remember when you were still in office going to a meeting you had with pastors and other politicians before American Pastors Network was even developed, and uh, you had that same kind of a goal. What, what led you in this uh, desire to show that, that both are ministries given to us by God? Well, Isaac, and I'll just, I'll just touch briefly right now. Um, God called me into public office first, and then He called me to preach. Hmm. And I can tell you that my experience of being in office praying before God, what is it that I'm supposed to do? Hmm. How are you going to hold me accountable, God? Really forced me to investigate what Scripture said, and I really found out that, lo and behold, and I'll talk about it more in the program, is that the responsibilities of those in office are nearly identical to those in the pulpit. Hmm. And I found that both of them really are truly ministers of God. So, ladies and gentlemen, that's just the beginning of the program today. Stay with us. As we come back from this break, we're going to bring in our guest, Perry Gauthier, and we're going to begin our discussion really about what the Bible says about those who are in office and why it refers to them as ministers of God. Truth, flexible or permanent? The Bible, ancient history or powerfully relevant? Culture, a reflection of enlightenment or warning signs. The pastor, commentator, or frontline combatant. Every day, American Pastors Network speaks to these questions where and when they matter. With hundreds of affiliate radio stations nationwide, a website and mobile app screening today's headlines through the twin lenses of the Bible and the Constitution. Educating, informing, equipping. This is the American Pastors Network. The time is now to stand in the gap for truth. Welcome back to our program, Stand in the Gap. And as we've been talking about this morning, uh, we have some very interesting times in our country. We just got through an election cycle that every time there's major elections, uh, there are parts that seem to be divisive in our country, but this one perhaps is at a historical high. Uh, the last uh, two elections, 2016 and now 2018, it seems like uh, we think our, our country couldn't get any more divided and it almost feels like it has gotten more divided. And uh, so here with us today is a special guest to talk about uh, this issue we have to talk about the, um, the, the our country thinks so poorly, it seems like distrust of a lot of our elected officials. And uh, we have someone here today to talk to us about the biblical solution, the only solution is biblical, of how we can gain that trust and uh, get things back to where they should be with our government, elected government officials, and uh, all those, uh, I guess, throughout government. So I'd like to uh, introduce a good friend of ours, and for any of you who are listeners to our radio program, Stand in the Gap, you might recognize uh, Perry Gauthier, a friend of ours. He's the Vice President of Capital Ministries. And we, we really, Perry, thank you for being with us. We, we are so excited to have you on to talk specifically about this with us today. Uh, you bet, Isaac and Sam, it's great to be with you. We sure really appreciate what you're doing, equipping pastors to speak um, boldly with the truth in all of culture. So thank you for what you do, and yeah, I'm glad to be on. Perry, you know, you're with Capital Ministries. You've uh, left, those of who know your testimony a little bit know that you went from being an architect to uh, then going to seminary, working in churches and church planting, as well as being an architect. And eventually you left that as a minister now with Capital Ministries, which has a singular focus on uh, our government officials. And so, I, I, you know, your, your goal, your belief in those in office being ministers to God, I'd like to kind of see why, why is that and what, what is that uh, ministry look like there at Capital Ministries? Yes, Isaac, uh, it's a real privilege to minister in the political realm. Um, I say I'm a missionary to the political realm, and Capital Ministries exists to make disciples of Jesus Christ in the political realm throughout the world. Um, actually, how I got into it, I was called, uh, my boss, Ralph Jollinger, the founder of our ministry, says that uh, the Lord called me from the campus to the Capitol. Uh, I used to be a college pastor for about 14 years, and uh, but it's not unlike the calling of the Apostle Paul when he was uh, Saul of Tarsus. The Lord uh, knocked him off his horse, blinded him. And then the Lord tells Ananias that 
uh, Saul is a chosen instrument of mine to reach Jews, Gentiles, and the kings of the earth. So I was an unlikely candidate for ministering to politicians, but uh, we love our mission. Uh, the uh, ministry to political leaders is just so critical because really, by God's design, government is God's idea. And by God's design, government leaders are in the what we call the nerve centers of culture. So uh, when, the, when the government is great, things in culture have the potential to be very good. And when government is terrible and oppressive and tyrannical and immoral, uh, it just crushes the culture. It crushes the people. It crushes precious souls of all of whom God cares for, even the lost. God doesn't only care for the church. He cares for society and for culture. So um, it's really uh, our missions to politicians is really what we call the missing mandate in missions, because most churches have forgotten that the capitals need to be reached. Government leaders and rulers need to be reached for Christ. They're, they're people, too. They need not only the gospel to, to forgive them of their sins, but they need the full counsel of the word so that they can, um, as they're accountable to God, as we'll talk about later, uh, they know what in the world the Lord wants them to do. They get their ethics uh, from the Bible. Well, Perry, thank you so much for that explanation, and it, it helps us understand what you're doing and, and what needs to be done in our capitals. Uh, Sam, you've been an elected official in our capital in Harrisburg in Pennsylvania, and uh, you've, you've spent almost 20 years there. Would there be a passage or a principle from Scripture that you really take to heart that shows us this design that, that Perry was just mentioning for elected officials? Well, absolutely, Isaac. You know, one of the things I found that those in office uh, don't know themselves is why they're there. Hmm. And often those in the pulpit don't teach about why they're there. But Scripture is very, very clear. And I just want to focus on that. I'll just go to one passage right now. First Peter chapter 2 uh, in verse 13 on down there, it lays out a couple things, but it's in the context um, of, ladies and gentlemen, of authority. In this passage, Paul is laying out authority. He says, submit yourselves to every ordinance of God. He says, uh, whether it be to the king of supreme, or verse 14, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them who do well. So if you think about ministers of God, those in office, those in civil government authority have two primary responsibilities. Praise those, encourage those to do well biblically, and punish swiftly, according to God's definition of justice, those who break the law. Now that's the function of government. And Isaac, when that's understood, it brings the mind of those in office into bearing, and it will tie into where we're going with the minister of God, but it helps to blend the whole concept of authority, God, and how he's laid out the aspects of government that Perry just talked about. So, uh, Perry, what, what Sam is bringing here, then, is what you were just talking about, is that for a politician or a government official to really do their job, they need to know their biblical purpose. And uh, kind of going along with yes. biblical purpose for us as individuals to pray for them and to, to help them is, is very biblical. I remember, you know, my dad had uh, opportunities even with some presidents and uh, cabinet members to meet with them, to work with them and pray with them. But there were others that kind of blocked him out, if you might call it, but he never stopped praying for them. He was extremely yes. burdened. I remember hearing him praying for them, seeing him in his study on his knees, praying for every one of them. Um, how important is that, and what is the biblical basis to, you know, praying for our elected officials? Well, you bet. It's so vital to pray. Number one, God commands it, and the chief uh, scripture for that is 1 Timothy 2, verses 1 through 4, where Paul commands Timothy, um, first of all, there must be prayers made. And then uh, to cut to the chase, he says, for kings and those in governmental authority. And uh, so we need to pray for government officials because, number one, they need to be saved. And in that context, um, that is the context of that chunk of Scripture right there. And so we need to pray evangelistically for the salvation of government leaders, but also pray for them because they need it. Um, I was speaking in a church years ago, and someone said, well, how can I pray for the president when he's passing these nasty laws of godlessness? And I said, well... You could pray for the president if you realize it's commanded by God. And secondly, um, unless you see prayer as a lollipop that you reward to good little boys and girls who only do the right things, then then you can pray for leaders 
pray because they need it. And uh, whether you see, whether it's past, present, or the current, or a future, whether you see a personal lack in their life or a policy um, lack, um, they need prayer, not only for their souls, but for their minds, a sense of righteousness, accountability before God, as Sam alluded to. Why are you in office? Because God puts you there. So it, prayer is just so critical that we mm. um, be lifting up our leaders. Well, that's so helpful to think of that part of accountability and that we as Christians and as pastors, the pulpit should be a help there. And so, you know, Sam, um, where do we go scripturally for this? Because you, you've said that there's a relationship, really a partnership that's not political uh, between the pulpit and uh, the policymakers, between the preachers and the politicians. Um, what is that relationship and where do we go to see God's design for, for where that partnership should be. Well, Isaac, I'm just going to go very quickly right now to Romans 13, probably the best passage to go, because it lays out the whole concept of authority. Ladies and gentlemen, you can take and look at this in your own uh, scripture later if you want, or if you have it right now. But Romans 13 establishes the fact that all authority is ordained by God. And then it goes into talking about certain things. But as we bear down on the concept here of ministers of God, I want to draw attention to one verse, verse 4. It says that for he, the person in office, is a minister of God to thee for good. Uh, and then it goes down and talks about again being a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him who does evil. The point I want to lay out here right now is simply this. The word minister of God in the Greek is diakonos, it means servant. That passage of the first usage, he is the minister of God, Isaac for good, really is a, a horizontal relationship. Mm -hmm. He's a minister to you for your good. It's where we get the idea of servant leaders. That's where it comes from. But it says that he is driven by God himself. God says he's my avenger, my, my servant to help punish that which is evil. So there's a vertical relationship. So ladies and gentlemen, a minister of God is both a person in office, is a servant to the people, but he's God's servant vertically. But the thing that really caught my attention, Isaac, was when I was in office, I'm looking, and as I said earlier, that the relationship between um, uh, those in office and those in the pulpit is a biblical partnership because God designed the authority position of the pulpit he designed the position of authority, civil government that we're talking about here. But I'm just going to take for the sake of time, because it's so short, we're going to put on the screen here in just a moment. But these are the duties of a minister of God, ladies and gentlemen, biblically. Uh, Isaiah 49, 23 talks about those in office being a nursing father and mother, a close personal interest relationship. It really talks about feeding the people. The second is in Romans 13, 14. They are a minister or a deacon of God. So they're God's servant, their minister. They serve God, they serve the people. Thirdly, they're to be counted as public shepherds to the people of God. Uh, Psalm 78, 70 and 71. Literally it talks about feeding and guiding the people. A shepherd. Now we think of that as a pastor, but those in office, God says, are, they are shepherds, public shepherds to God. They're answerable to God. Fourth, they're, they're referred to in, in 1 Samuel 10, 1, 2, Chronic, uh, 2 Kings 20, verse 3, as captains of his people. That means they're there to defend and lead the people. Fifth, they're referred to in Psalm 47, 9 as shields of the earth, which means they're there as umbrellas of protection for the people. Their lives do make a difference. They're there to lead the people to protect and intercede. And then finally, Romans 13, 4, I've just talked about, they are avengers of God for the people to protect them. So, ladies and gentlemen, those literally uh, are uh, the duties of those in office as ministers of God. That's why they are God's servants, and those are nearly identical to the pastor in the pulpit. That's why you understand that. The pulpit needs to preach about those in office. The pulpit needs to lay this out because this concept, Isaac, this is biblical. This is the only place we find out how God laid it out. And that's why working together is a partnership 
not a political relationship. Hmm. So important, so critical, so crucial to understand these things. And as we said at the beginning of the program, the only solutions for this issue will come from the Bible. So we have to be biblically uh, grounded and, and have that foundation. Perry was showing us the duty and the accountability, especially through prayer. Uh, there's accountability that we as Christians need to hold uh, those in office accountable, but they need to be accountable ultimately to God. And then Sam, you were showing us that their duty is really as ministers of God to the people. And uh, that is so important, so crucial, and so often forgotten, sometimes by politicians, sometimes by the pulpits. And oftentimes I think it's out of ignorance that we're just not preaching about it, so we're not hearing about it. You're hearing about it now, you're hearing about it today. We're gonna take a real quick break and come back after that to make the final points, to wrap it up and to, to help you know how to do this on your own and to apply this so that we can pray for and be involved with our elected officials and see the Lord work the way things should work. Stand in the Gap is produced and recorded in the studios of WBPH Philadelphia, positively different television. To watch archives of this program, go to WBPH.org. Welcome back as we now go to our conclusion. We're talking about uh, politicians as ministers of God, a paradigm shifting thought. It really is. But we've just touched briefly on what the Bible says about it and the fact that those in office are His servants. When they understand it, they act differently in office. When we pray for them, we pray for them differently. When we teach, when we preach, when we live it, God's way, God blesses. That's His design. It's an amazing design. Perry, I want to go back to you right now, just for a closing minute here from your perspective. We've talked about some very singular principles in relationship to this uh, aspect that politicians are ministers of God and how we should relate. Just take the top principle, perhaps, that we've discussed here today that to you stands out. If somebody were to apply it, would perhaps be transformative in their life. What would it be? Yes, you know, Sam, I think it would be that we must be praying for our government leaders. They are accountable to God, and they're good for culture. I tell my Nebraska senators that you're societal saviors, sort of, uh, because God wants them as his ministers to affect culture through making moral law that honors God. So the church must reach the state, as Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, with the gospel and teach the state, because without the church— the state is doomed. So believers must be engaged with a salt and light presence, not only in prayer, but in, in uh, engaging into the state with the Word of God. Perry, you're exactly correct. And we didn't say it, but we know that when the righteous are in authority, the people mm -hmm. rejoice. So having yes. godly leaders, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is what we want. How, do we, how does that happen if we don't interact with them? How are we going to have righteous leaders if we put them off limits and we don't teach about them from the pulpit? God's design means interaction with God's people, and that's all the way around. You who are watching and both praying, involving, and certainly from the pulpit. Isaac, let me go to you, ask you the same thing. What singular point perhaps has been most transformative in your life, and that for the viewer's sake right now, if they were to apply, would be transformative, you think, to well, them? I have to echo the fact of the power of prayer, and I think pastors and those of you who have an influence on your pastor to encourage uh, pastors to really teach us to be praying for our politicians and to, to be praying in detailed manner for them. It's very lonely being a politician. So many times we think of it as glamorous, but it's actually very lonely. It's hard on the family members, pray for their family and uh, just pray in great detail for them. And then that I think a lot of times will lead us to get more involved in their lives. Isaac, I think that's a great summary. And ladies and gentlemen, we're at that about at the close of the program right now. I trust that, we, that uh, you've benefited to some degree with this emphasis today. Uh, we look around us, we see such division in our country. We see the, the, what I call oftentimes the myths of separation in church and state where we think that we can never be involved as God's people with government. How can we not be when God established it? And when we understand that those in office are His ministers, 
accountable to Him, just like you and I are individually, they are in their capacity, just like the pastor in the pulpit, we understand how biblical worldview, God's view applied, really does make a difference. I hope that you'll take and apply this. Now, if you've been watching our program and you've never contacted us, I'd appreciate that if you'd write us this week, send us a note, uh, contact us via our website. Let us know that you are watching this program, that you are praying for us. And I would ask you that if God were to so put on your heart, join us uh, financially. Become a financial partner with us on this program so that we can continue to reach people all across the country with the truth of God's Word. Until we meet again, stand in the gap for truth where you are.